at the faithful few. Um, thank you guys for plugging in. Thanks, Christina, for being here. Take, I gotta take my recoup. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna talk to you guys first about um, because Dan Knight had a um, request that I talk about how to engage people at trade shows, and I was gonna spend some time with him on the phone, but then I figured let's make it into a training. So um, we were, we actually just did HHS the other day. And um, so I got tied up and then yesterday we had church. So Sarasota. I'm going to go ahead and, and do it. Yeah, we were down in Sarasota. We had a, a good um, HHS down there and we're wrapping it up. So I got a new, few new partners on board. And um, so it went really well. What you know, you have to realize if you want to be successful in your business, you have to do it. You know, you always say that, you know, if your team did what you did today, what type of a team would you have? And so, you know, I can't just tell people to go out and work the business and do shows and, and book HHSs if I'm not willing to go out and do it our, myself. So, Christine and I, you know, we actually did one of our own, um, which went over like three days here at our house because we just kept the display up and kept bringing people in. And uh, we didn't sell anything at it. So, I mean, hey, guess what? We do shows and people don't buy. Um, it's not, not, you know, it's not like everything we do is a home run, but the reason why we're successful is because, um, you know, we just do it a lot. So, I mean, if you swing the, the golf club long enough, like I hit a hole in one uh, last summer and um, it's not because I'm a good golfer at all. It's just because I golf, you know, so I get out on the golf course and if you take enough shots, eventually you're going to get lucky and, and hit a hole in one, right? So some people do it their whole lives and never get it. So sometimes it's God's favor too, but um, anyway, so that's an aside. All right. So I've given people plenty of time to get on. Let's talk about a trade show. And also, if you have any questions, go ahead and put it down in the bottom and I can, I can hit them. Okay. I had somebody texting me a question. All right. So um, I know that some of you guys just finished, Kim just finished a trade, two of them, two big uh, fairs. And, um, you know, I mean, obviously when you do a fair, you have to figure out the people that are coming through your show, right? You have to kind of get a feel for who, who is the, the crowd, right? Every crowd has its own personality. You know, the, the personality of a crowd here in, in uh, Tampa, Florida is way different than the personality of a crowd in, than when I do a show in Pittsburgh, right? So Pittsburgh is no, notoriously sarcastic and, you know, um, it's just a different type of humor up there. So I can, I can say things to people that I normally, you know, if I say this, say it's something to somebody in Pittsburgh and then I say the same thing to somebody in Tampa, they look at me in Tampa, like they want to punch me in the face or something. Right. Um, where in Pittsburgh, it's just normal. So I have to get a feel for who am I actually talking to? Number one. So you, you, you know, you, the first few hours of a show is just kind of getting to know your crowd by getting out in the crowd. The last thing you want to do at a trade show is sit in the back of your booth and uh and text people or play candy crush or you know just be unapproachable you know the idea of a show is is that you have a window of opportunity one day two day three day ten day twelve day depending on how long your show is to capture a sale i look at a trade show or a um even a flea market or anything like that county fair trade show vendor fair whatever it's like door-to-door -door sales except i can i can stand in one place and the doors are rotating past me not every door is a buyer you know so just like in door-to-door -door sales i may knock 100 doors before i get my sale but i know that if i knock 100 doors i'm going to get a sale the problem is, is in a lot of trade shows people aren't out, out in the alleys knocking the doors they're waiting for people to walk into their booth and no one's ever going to walk into your booth so you have to have that mental mindset of that this is just like door-to-door -door sales, except I'm stationary and the doors are rotating past me. I still have to knock the door and make a pitch. If I don't knock the door and make a pitch, they're not going to stop. Just like when I'm door-to-door -door selling, if I walk down the street and I don't knock on the door, literally no one is going to buy my product from me. Okay. 
So that's something you have to have that mindset of is that you've got to actively be working your crowd. And so it's just engagement. It's crowd engagement. So when somebody walks by your booth, you have to be able to literally grab their attention because I, have you ever walked personally ever walked through a trade show? I know for me, it's, it's like sensory overload, right? So you're walking down and out and there's so much going on. That's why even for me, when I do my booth, I don't like to put too much into my booth because it's, there's only so much our brains can, can handle, right? You're walking down and it's just like everything, man. There's TV screens going and people with mops and, and slicers and dicers and vibrating, you know, uh, foot pads and, and chairs that flip you upside down and, you know, people laying on bed. It's, it's just, you know, it's like, you know, it's like this chaos is going on. You know, it's, it's happening. Right. So normally when you walk through a show, you maybe have a list. These are certain things that I need. And this is why I came to the show. Maybe I'm building a house and, and I need, you know, new window or I need to figure out the windows and the roof and the gutter and whatever. So maybe my gutter leaks, I'm looking for specifically for gutter helmet. Right. That's why I'm there. What stops me at a trade show is when there's a crowd of people around a booth. If I see a crowd, I need to, I usually will slow down and look into the booth to figure out why is there so many people gathered around this one booth? It's some old man selling a slicer or dicer. Is it, um, you know, the free television streaming device? Is it, you know, the Ginzu man? Is it the Cutco girl? What is it? And why is so, and why is everybody riveted onto that particular booth. Is a guy giving out free pickles, you know? I mean, like that booth's always really popular, right? Wine samples, pickles, cookies, chips and dips, right? So these are what gets people to stop. But you have to put yourself in the position of that person. They don't care that you're there, right? They just don't care. Like they didn't come to the show. No one got up in the morning and said, man, I, I just need to go down to that fair and I need to buy a air sanitizer. They came to see a demolition derby, right? They came to, to go, you know, vote on their favorite apple pie. They came to, you know, bid on a steer or something like that, right? Uh, if I go to the fair, maybe I have, you have kids, they come for the food and the rides, okay? So you, you have to be able to capture the person. You have to be able to get their attention. And so I do hooks. To, to hook people. Number one hook, you know, we learned at the, in Pittsburgh was, is I'd ask people if they had their free samples yet. Cause I noticed that everybody was stopping for a free sample. Now, Dave uh, Trumbull, he does um, free water samples, right? So he's got living water and a big five gallon jug cooled with little cups and Hey, would you like a free sample of water? That's phenomenal. And that's what he told me to do. He said, Mark, you know, you need to do free water at your show. Well, listen, I'm, I don't know, man, I'm, I'm traveling a thousand miles to get to my show. I don't feel like jug, hauling in a jug of water. Maybe I'm just lazy, right? So I said, okay, let's do um, free air samples because I mean, if people want a free sample, I, I, it's so much easier for me to, to give them a sample of air than it is to give them a sample of water, right? So um, yeah, because water, you need cups, you need, you need jugs, you need to keep it cool. You know, I gotta go home and fill up the jug every night, whatever. And then there's waste everywhere. You're going to throw away cups and whatnot. So I said, let's just do free samples of air. So when people come through, I say, hey, did you get your free sample? It's just as effective as me saying, here, have a, have a cup of water or here, have a have a uh, free pickle, right? The pickle guy. I mean, that, that guy drives me crazy because I'll walk by the booth. He sticks out the pickle and he sticks it in your bare hand. Like, so now I got pickle juice all over my hand. He doesn't give me a cup or nothing. He's got a pair of tongs and a pickle, right? Um and now you're standing there, you got like, you know, all this juice running down your arm, you're trying to eat the pickle, you know, then it, I don't like that, right? But if I said to you, hey, did you get your free sample yet? You're still going to stop, you're still going to look. What, what, what's, what do you got? And then if sometimes people were just so programmed to say no, they'll just say, no, no, I'm good. And they just keep walking. And then they'll look and they'll say mold, like they'll see my sign, you know. VOCs and you know DNA viruses, mold. And they're like free samples. What the heck's this guy got? And then maybe they'll pause long enough for me to say, "Come on, take a free sample." I'm not going to get defeated and turn around and, and step back into my booth and go, "Oh man, you know, oh man, that guy he just totally blew me off." You know, I don't really care. 
because here's my thing is, is I got to remember it's door to door sales. I'm only looking for one in a hundred to buy. So the faster I can move through my hundred, the better, but I still got to knock a hundred doors. I still got to, I still got to pitch 100 people to get my sale. Right. So that's number one. Hey, did you get your free sample? What? And then I'll see it. Come on in, come into the booth, check it out, have a deep breath, feel how, feel how nice and fresh the air is in here. And then I take them straight over to the smoke box, right? So I got the living proof sitting there. I have it all ready to go. It's full of oil. I flick the switch. I'm talking to them. Do you ever notice in the, in the sun, when the sun shines into your house, how there's a beam of light and the beam of light's full of dust and you can just see the dust hanging in here. And then by then my box is pretty full of smoke. And I point to the box. I say, this box represents DNA viruses, RNA viruses, dust, mold, dander, your pet, you know, your pet hair, um, all the junk that's in the air that ends up in your lungs that causes asthma and COPD and, and allergies and seasonal, you know, um, like I used to get um, sinus infections, right? And so I say, that's what all this represents. And then I take my personal unit and I go, that's why I wear this device. This is a brush ionizer. This activates the air in my breathing space, right? And it literally drops the air. So like when COVID was like rampant, I would, which it never really was, but you know, people were just being stupid with masks on. But I would say to the person, hey, listen, uh, I'll trade you your mask. I'll give you $50 or I'll give you $20. I'll give you 10% off if you give me your mask. And that literally gets people to stop because now they're offended almost. They're like, what? I, I'm not giving you my mask. I, I love my mask. You know, I, I've, I, you know, I've changed my life to have this mask. But then I say the reason why is because I can get, I can give you a discount on my mask. I'll give you 10% off of my mask if you give me your mask. Okay. That's, uh, that's aggressive sales. That's like, I want to get out there. And I want to grab the person. So then I take that thing and I flick the switches and the smoke disappears. And I say, this is what's happening in real time all around me. Okay. So maybe my hook is, uh, and then I have the active pure cell. So step number two is I picked up, I pick up that cell, you know, and I, Hey, it's great to drop viruses, just like your mask. It captures things right in front of your face. But now this, this device right here, this is actually going to sanitize the air and surface. It was developed in outer space, right? On the international space station. And so, so then I go into active pure and then I say, and it was so powerful and proven and that it, you know, is a duct in the space technology hall of fame. In fact, we use it in the laundry pure. Then I pick up the laundry pure and I talk about laundry pure. And that's how the ionizers are so powerful that we use it in our living water. And I go over to living water. And so you realize I, I brought them in on a fresh air sample and I just walked through the entire, you know, the whole line. And then, of course, what do they want to know right away? Well, it's going to cost me, you know, don't give up any goods until you've done your pitch. It's going to cost you listening to my pitch before I give you a price. That's what, that's the cost. That's what you got to pay. You don't like it. Why'd you bother coming to a trade show? I don't want to be sold. Then why did you come? what did you think? Do you think I spent $1,200 to stand here and wave at you as you walk by and gave you free candy? No, I came here to sell you something and you came here to buy something. That's it. That's the relationship I have with that person in the alleyway. You, you cannot be bashful when it comes to asking for a close because you're there to make money. And they know that. And if they don't know that, you need to tell them that. Listen, I didn't get all dressed up and come out here. I didn't drive a thousand miles to come here and set up this, this table and bring all this product just to say hi to you as you walk by. No, I am going to try to sell you something. And if you don't like it, don't come to trade shows. You know what I mean? You have to just put things into perspective for people who are like that. Well, I don't want to be sold. Well, then why did you come? Like, seriously, like, why, did, why are you even here then? You just came to what? Because it's Senior Citizen Day and they let you in for free, right? What, that happens a lot. So anyways, know your crowd, get the person in, walk them through everything. And then when it comes down to price, then you can pitch your price, which I'm going to get to that in a minute. Another hook, stand out front with your laundry pure. Hey, and if you don't have a laundry pure, invest in one, right? If you, and if you don't want to invest in one, then, then do a, a HHS at your house, get a thousand points and get a free one from corporate. How about that? If you, if you can't afford one, then, then take a picture of one and hold it up. Get the flip book, hold it up, get, get, get an empty box and, and write laundry pure on it with a magic marker. I, mean, I don't care what you do, right? Take an empty box, wrap it in, in uh, tin foil, okay? And then stand there. Hey, look, it's laundry pure, right? And I asked the person, hey, Dan, uh, do you still do laundry the old fashioned way? Are you still using soap? Or, or better yet, I say, hey, uh, excuse me, ma'am. Um, 
do you still do laundry? You know, like, so I asked him a question like, excuse me, ma'am, are you still doing laundry? Of course I do laundry. Uh, six loads a week, you know what I mean? Um, some women say, no, no, I don't do laundry. My husband does it. Okay, great. So the laundry is still happening at your house, right? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, good. Uh, are you still using soap and hot water? Uh, yeah, like how else am I going to do it? You know, and then you go, great. Well, let me, if, would it be worth maybe two, three minutes of your time? If I could show you what you can eliminate soap, eliminate hot water, save yourself a bunch of money, get, reduce the chemicals that are, are being put in your body with laundry pure. What is that? Like they, it, and it hooks them in. Okay. So when I hook the person, I'm not taking that person to laundry pure. I'm taking them to living proof. Hey, do you ever look through a beam of light and you see all that dust particles and dust and dander and blah, blah, blah. You know what that is? That's all the stuff that we're breathing into our lungs, blah, 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 blah. And I go through that, I flick the switches, woo. And then I get out the, the active pure cell and I talk about NASA or whatever, the, you can't say NASA, but I say it anyway. Yeah. Um, you know, NASA, the International Space Station, astronauts, the potatoes. And then I go through active pure technology and, and how it's revolutionizing the world, sanitizing is so powerful that we put it into laundry pure. But, but before I, maybe before I hit laundry pure, while I'm on my ionizer, I'm talking about my fresh air personal, I'll move into water. Living water takes ionization, it strips the water and, and it puts the, the, the two streams, the upper stream and the lower stream. And the upper stream is, is now alkaline water and alkaline water is better for you, it gives you energy. And now we have our H2 fuel bottle. And then I'll work my way around into the laundry pure. So now I've hooked them. Is it worth two, three minutes of your time to see what I got? I'm not wasting your time, but I'm not going to let you go unless you've heard my pitch. Okay, so what's the hook that's going to get the person into the booth? Hey, excuse me, sir, are you still buying bottled water? Especially if they have it. I mean, it, like, it's almost a stupid question, right? The guy's walking through with, like, a bottle of Desanti water. Excuse me, sir, are you still buying bottled water? I noticed you're carrying, a, you're carrying it. Did you, did you fill it up from your house or did you buy it here? Oh, no, I bought it. What it cost you? It cost me about six bucks. Okay, great. Because you're at a trade show. I mean, they're, they're, they're captive. I spent five bucks for a bottle of water. If I could show you a way you can eliminate ever, ever having to buy a bottle of water ever again, and that water is dead as doornail. And maybe have my little light, water light in the alleyway. It's here. Let me, let me test it for you. Here, put a little bit in the cap. I'll, I'll, I'll stick it in it. And it's dead. And then I said, let me show you real quick. Let me, let me bring you into my booth. And then you bring them in. Like, don't, don't make your booth like a wall that you're in the inside, they're on the outside, and it's not in, inviting. I keep one table, 99%. I used to do three tables at a booth and all this stuff. I got it down to where it's one table, maybe two. You know, maybe I have one in the back, one up the side. Okay. I keep two tables, maybe two, but it's open format. I got a 10 by 10 booth. I don't need a 25. I don't need a 20 by 10. 10 by 10 is perfect size. And I'm in the, I, my table's in the back. I'm not in the back. I'm out in the alleyway. My table's in the back. Okay. And I'm pitching them. So now I'm bringing them in on water. I'm bringing them in on air. I'm bringing them in on steady power. I'm bringing them in on whatever. If I, if you Zyto scan people, I mean, I've done shows where I've Zyto scanned 150 people. And it's like, hey, listen, um, we're doing free health screenings. I'm taking, here's a list. If you'd like to get on the list for, it's a, they're every half hour. Um, I'd like to schedule you in a time slot. Are you interested? It doesn't cost you a dime. You can see what's going on inside your body without going to the doctor, or having to wear a mask and get a vaccine. Okay, come on over, check it out. I don't care how you hook them, but you got to hook them. And you got to be actively out there hooking them. But Mark, I'm shy. Yeah, Moses was shy. So he brought Aaron along with him, right? My Moses, I can't, I can't speak to Pharaoh God. I stutter. Well, then take your brother with you. So listen, if you're shy, bring your brother with you to the show. Bring somebody with you who's not shy or get out of your shell, right? <clears throat> You're not shy. I don't know who told you that, right? Well, I can't speak well. Who cares? The president can't speak well, but yet he's the president of the United States. So listen, don't tell me that you have an issue why, why you can. Tell me why you can. Use your disadvantage to your advantage. Use it to your advantage. Don't, don't, don't sit there and say, well, I can't. No, that's what's going to hook people in. You know, I always told the story about that guy who's had a, I mean, this is a, I mean, it's, you know, in today's world, you got to be careful because you don't want to offend people. But, you know, I heard a story a long, long time ago about a guy who stuttered really bad and he was an encyclopedia salesman and he was the number one encyclopedia salesman in the country. And he had a really bad stutter and he was door-to-door -door salesman. So how do you, how do you accomplish 
a job where you stutter so bad. It was very, very bad. And his friend said to him, man, he's like, how do you, how do you do it? And, uh, and he said, this like, really, you know, this like he was stuttering, you know, and he said, uh, he said, I just go to the door and I ask him, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm out here selling this, you know, encyclopedias. And he goes, um, would you like to buy one? Or you want me to read it to you? And, uh, and that's how the people got the sale. So he took his disadvantage and he flipped it into an advantage. So don't ever think that you're not good enough or you're not smart enough, or you don't know, you don't know enough or whatever. Learn a little bit, just learn a little bit, you know, dust particles dropping, VOC, like get some keywords in your vocabulary and do it with passion and, and excitement watch and you're gonna be video. successful. Yeah, watch the new HHS videos, it's, it's phenomenal, yeah. right? It's, and it's a really, really good training tool. So if you, you know, everybody has access to the new HHS video, I learned from it, I watched it again the other day, 40 minutes of, of, of information, right? And you don't have to play the full 40 minutes to somebody. You could just say, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna talk about air, but I'm gonna show you laundry and living water. Or I'm gonna talk to you about laundry and living water. I'm gonna show you the air clip of the video. I think you, maybe you need somebody to come on and close that part. In fact, there's another one with me actually closing it that, that still hasn't been released. So once that comes out, then you can, I, I mean, I'm gonna set it up. So I'll close the, the meeting for you. Get some keywords, get some things into your vocabulary that make it, it's just, it's normal. I didn't know anything about this stuff in December of 2020. And I went out and built a team. All I knew was, is a cut on your arm, hydrogen peroxide bubbles, right? Catalyst, liquid to gas. And that's all I knew really. Hey, did you ever get a cut on your arm? You pour hydrogen peroxide on it, it bubbles. Yeah. Well, that's, that's uh, the, the cuts of catalyst. You pour liquid, liquid becomes a gas. No different than this, this technology. All we're doing is we're taking liquid, we're turning it into gas form, we're stripping hydrogen from ox oxygen, we're making hydroxyls or super oxides or oxidizers that are going out and they're gonna just, and as they fly through the air, they're gonna come into contact with, you know, um, SARS-CoV-2 or DNA viruses, RNA viruses, envelope viruses, they pierce the outer shell and they, and they basically liquefy, all right? And make it in, in, you know, inoperable. That's all I did. And then you, as you go, that's why it's important to be on trainings. That's why it's important to listen to Dr. Troy. That's why it's important to, to, to watch your videos. That's why it's important to get into CODA. Okay. And look, guys, this doesn't have to be just for a trade show. It can be for your life in general. Like, hey, while you're out, if you're sitting on the beach and you're talking to the person next to them and they're wearing a mask and they're outside and it's 150 degrees out. Like we, we were just in Disney in Epcot and there's still people walking in 100 degree weather outside with a mask on. Like seriously, guys, we've got like the, the, there's still a, a massive need for what we have because people are still living in fear. Not that I want to play on anybody's fears, but they're still living in it. So why wouldn't I? Why not? Why wouldn't I set somebody free and say, listen, you don't need to live like this anymore. You can take that stupid mask off your face and you can live free again. People are still living like this. And when you go into the science and the data of it, it just like, it, it releases people. Man, we had a couple come through a booth. And um, the fact is, I think they came through one of uh, the county fair with Kim and this older couple. When they came through my first show, the guy had double mask. I mean, double mask. And I set him free. They bought, and they ended up buying for me like a, a six pack of personals. They bought mobile units. They bought, like, they're set free. They're set free. The guy, he loves us. His wife called me. I was on the beach. She called and said, hey, you know, I just got to tell you, I was at somebody, we had people at our house. They had COVID and just giving me a testament, not even in my business. They're, they're, they're a customer that came through a trade show. And they're still, to this day, wearing the personal unit, walking through fairs, walking through places, talking to people, telling people it's their life alert, whatever, right? That, that's coming out of a show. These people aren't in my business. They haven't been to training, but they know that it works because I set them free and that's what you can do for people, right? So now you've got them to your booth, you've walked them through the thing. And this is where most people drop the ball is they don't ask for the sale. They don't ask for it. You know, I did door to door sales and I'm telling you something, it's a wake up call. My, my, my income was 100% commission. I don't get paid unless you spend money. I, there is no, and man, I would be shipped off to, to different cities. And they would put us up in the house. You know, I, I lived in Charlotte for the summer. My wife's not there. My kid's not there. It's not me. I don't have my dog. It's just me. The entire summer. 
door-to-door selling, day in, day out, walking through neighborhoods, getting rejection. But what I realized was if I can't close a deal, I can't, then the, all this summer has been totally wasted. I could have been hanging out with my son. I could have been with my wife. I could have been visiting my family. I could have been doing things I wanted to do. But, I, but that's the, that, that was the, the, like this urgency for me that I had to close the deal. And that's where so many people drop the ball. They go to these shows. They set up. They, they have a beautiful display. They're giving out water. They're doing this. They're doing that. They're getting the hook. They're bringing them in. They're pitching the person. They're, they're, they're super knowledgeable about hydroxyls and this and that and the other thing. And then they, the person gives them, well, I got to go home and pray about it. And they say, okay, see you later. And that's it. It's done. You're not, they're not coming back, guys. They're not coming back. Or they'll say, why don't you give me my business card? I'm really interested. Uh, you know, hey, Mike, just give me your business card. I'm very interested. No, you're not. You're going to take my card and you're going to throw it away. That's what you're going to do with it. And I literally, I'll tell people that. I'll say, no, I don't give out cards. Why don't you give out cards? Because, because you know how many cards I found in the trash can on the corner down here? You know how many cards I find laying on, on the alleyway? Because people don't want your card. They don't want to tell you no. Listen, if you're, I'm not letting you leave my booth till you tell me no. You got to tell me no. So you have to be, you have to have boldness. You have to have boldness. Uh, the fact is, I'm gonna look something up real quick. But anyways, while I'm while I'm typing and looking, so you get the person in the booth, and then it comes down to you say, listen, let me let me give you, let me drop my price. Let me show you what this thing's gonna cost you, right? This is why we're here. Look, guys, and I'm, I'm just real with people. Look, I'm here to make money, right? You're here to spend money. I'm here to make money. I'm going to help you lose some of your money right now. I'm going to help, help you release it, all right? You're going to release some money to me. I'm going to give you probably it's going to save you money. It's a win-win situation, all right? Let me go through my numbers for you. So be prepared. Know what everything costs. When somebody says, how much is this? Don't be like, oh, let me get out the book and let me look on the chart. And um, well, this one here is... Uh, you know, I think it's, you know, $14.99 and tax and um, with shipping. And then let me get out my, let me get out my abacus and like try to free. No, you just got to know, like, these are the price and, and you just make it. I have a whole show sheet. I keep it. It's cheat sheet, but you know it. I mean, what are you going to sell your mobile unit for? You bought it for 139 bucks and sell it for 200, right? Maybe online at 199. I don't care. I'm selling mine for 200. I'm not going to charge tax. I'm not going to charge shipping. Boom, out the door, 200 bucks. You want this uh, personal unit? It costs me 79 bucks. I sell it to you for 150 bucks. Whatever, I mean, whatever the numbers are, you got to have that ingrained in your brain. And then you have to have your deal because people are coming looking for a deal, right? Give me one second. So people are coming through looking for a deal, right? Okay, here's a, here's a quote, and this is from Go, Goth, Goth or whatever that his name is. It says, whatever you can do or dream, you can. Begin it. Begin it. It says, whatever you can do or dream, you can. Begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. So literally, whatever you can dream, you have to do it. You have to begin it. But boldness is what comes in. Boldness has the power. Boldness has the genius. Boldness, as this guy says, has the magic in it, right? That's what's going to close the deal. It's your boldness to step in front of somebody because people, they can't say no. They can't. That's why people buy cars and houses and clothes and things. Like, it's so hard to tell somebody no to their face unless the person never asks you. You're hoping they don't ask. I do it. I mean, I walk through trade shows and people are like, oh, you know, I want to buy a new roof for your house. Man, I rent. I'm so sorry. And then I'm just out. Like, I'm not wasting the guy's time. Because I'm a professional, I'm, and this is what I do. I, I, I've grown up since I was 12 years old, eight years old, working trade shows. So I, I know how to pitch, and I know how to be pitched, and I know how to avoid a pitch. Okay, oh, come here, let me just show you something. Look, don't waste your time. I'm a vendor here. I appreciate your product. I'll be back later. Maybe I'll give it a check. I mean, hey, look, I, I, there's things I walk, we walk out of every trade show with stuff, everyone. Because there's, there's, those guys are selling. They want to make a living. Sometimes I buy because they buy from me. But anyways. So I go to drop my price and I say, listen, if you were to go to my website right here, right now, that air, that machine, that machine right here, whether it's air, water, laundry is, you know, $14.99 plus tax plus shipping, laundry, $14.99 plus tax plus shipping, water, $24.99 plus tax plus shipping. So if you were to buy all three of them, I guess it's throwing an extra one, you know, 
doesn't matter. Let's say 1500 bucks. But if you were to buy this air right here, right now at this show, it's $1,200. I'm going to drop ship it to your house. I'm still pay. I'm going to pay tax. I'm going to pay shipping, but I'm going to ship it to your house. And then you have your ones that are there. So like I might say, hey, look, that one sitting right there on the floor, you can have that one for $999.99 or a thousand bucks or 900 bucks or 800. What is your breaking point on that unit? What's your breaking point? Like, hey, man, if I got a unit for free, and guys, you know, you guys get loyalty points. Go in your back office. Look on your look in your Sky Wallet. If you if you haven't been in your Sky Wallet, you've been on uh, Auto Ship. If you've been on Subscribe and Save for months now, in your back office, you get free. You're, they're giving you money, guys. You got to go into your back office, go to your Sky Wallet, and look. I mean, I just looked at two of them yesterday. One had two hundred, and one had fifty bucks. Okay, and I went and said, "Great, fifty bucks. And this guy can get." you know, a mobile and a personal, uh, the 50, we can try out whatever. I mean, like it's free money. So listen, the company wants to bless you. They want to give you stuff. So let's say I get all my free points and I get a free air and surface pro and that air and surface pro is sitting there and my show cost me, let's say I have two of them and my show cost me 1200 bucks. I know my breaking point on that unit. Now I'm not going to sell two for 600, but I might sell those two sitting there for 800. Or I might say at some shows I've gone to 800, some shows I've gone to 900. Some, I, sometimes I'm firm, like in Tampa, I was firm, 900 bucks, that's it. It's as low as I would go. I only had three machines to sell and I was it. I couldn't go any lower, right? If I have 15 machines to sell, I might drop it to 800 until I get to where my show's been paid off. Okay, so I know my breaking point. I know how low I can go on a unit. And I'll say to the person, $14.99 on the website, $1,200 drop shipped to your house. But if you're willing to walk out the door with that unit right there, it's yours today for $900. There's no, I'm not giving you anything, man. It's $900. You're not returning it in 30 days. You're not calling me until you don't like it. There's no refunds, no guarantees. You're going to get a three-year warranty on it. That's it. Out the door, $900. End of story, case closed, final sale. All sales are final. But you're walking out the door with it. I'm putting a big piece of tape on it, making a handle, right? And, and reinforcing it. Um, and then you're going to be my advertising arm as you walk through the show. That's why I'm willing to do it. And other things I got a booth to pay for. Hey, Mike, I, mean, I appreciate you coming through my show, but you know, I got to pay for this booth and they're not cheap. And this promoter doesn't give these things away. What I pay for electric at a show is what I pay for electric in my house for two months. But for some reason, they think it's cool to charge me for, for a 110 three prong outlet, $198 for electric. It's a, it's a racket. But so guess what that means? It means that I need to make a sale and you're going to get a great deal today. All right. And then once you've gotten that and the person is like sitting there, when you see the, the, wall, the, the, the wall that come out and the credit card in the hand and you know that they're ready to buy, that's where you've got to move, move into your upselling. You know, hey, well, listen, while you're here, if you want to throw in a laundry pure and, you know, and then you've got your numbers. Look, yeah, okay, listen, you're going to buy. I know what it costs for me for, for a pro pack. I know what it costs for me for whole house protection. So let's say whole house protection is 2000 bucks. So the person sitting there, they're, they're ready to spend $1,200 for a unit. I might just tell the person, I might say, hey, listen, let's double your money, make it 2400 and I'll get you the whole package. I mean, like, like you got to think outside of the box, man. You know, or make it three thousand. You know, for three thousand bucks, you get the whole package. Okay, don't get into financing. Don't get into easy pay. Don't, don't, don't try not to. Like I don't listen. People have got money. All right, I don't care how bad the economy gets. If people are coming through the show. They're, they're, they're gonna, they'll find it. You know, I always say, if you were broke down along the road, who would you call that would help you in the middle of the night? Like, you know. People can come up with money if they have to. I mean, obviously there's, there's situations where we're totally broke, but then why in the world are you walking through a trade show, right? I mean, you're just trying to torture yourself. I'm completely broke, but I'm gonna spend $25 to go into a trade show and walk around and look at stuff I can't afford. No, people come in, they've got money. They came in with a purpose. Now, county fair might be different. You know, I mean, sometimes county fairs are super cheap to get in and they just want cheap entertainment for the kids, right? A flea market may be different, right? I mean, you may go into flea market. That's why, you know, I mean, we don't really do a lot of flea markets, but, you know, the, 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 the mindset may be, hey, the guy, everybody else is selling stuff for 10 cents. Why are you $1,500? I, I don't know, $1,500, you're crazy. That's where you're focusing on mobiles 
That's where you're focused on fresh air personal. That's where you're focused on pet refresh. That's where you're focused on, on signing people up in the business to make extra money. That's where your focus shifts to, to like, how can I help you to save money where you're bringing in a partner? Okay. So if people are low budget and, 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 and you know, Hey, that's fine. If you're on a low budget situation right now, that's fine. I mean, get it. I get it. So then how can I help you? Listen, Mark, I know that you're, you know, you're, you're, um, you're trying to save a few bucks here. I know you really, really want this product, but if I could show you where you could actually make money, we could invite people to your house. We can do a healthy home showcase. And I could teach you a way to, to bring your friends together. And you could actually earn this stuff for free. Can you go ahead and sign in, sign up my drawing slip? Okay. So then the next phase that I'm going to move into is the drawing slip. So when I'm at a show, there's always going to be a free drawing. And my free drawing is always the same as $500, $500 off air, water, or laundry. And everybody's a winner. I mean, I just, you know, used to be, we would draw a name, call them. Hey, Dan, just letting you know you won. You get $500 off. And, it, you know, you never heard back or whatever. Because they're like, I don't want to spend a thousand bucks. You know, I thought it was going to be free. So I just call everyone. Hey, so you know, you're one of our winners. So it's not like you're, you're the winner. You're one of our winners. You get $500 off air, water, or laundry. Which one would you like to take advantage of? And I need to know. I mean, like, I'm, I, you, you can't leave it, un, uh, you know, indefinitely open. You know, I'm closing this thing out within the next 48 hours. Can you get back to me? And I'll make exceptions. If somebody calls me a month from now and says, hey, I was at your show. You told me I was a winner. I didn't have the money. I have it now. Can you still extend it? Sure, why not? Because I'll take a thousand bucks for a unit all day long, right? Now, sometimes they'll say, well, at the show, you were selling that one for 900 bucks. I'm like, yeah, you should have bought it. You really should have. I mean, it was a great deal and I'm not giving you that deal. Because if you remember, I said it was 1200 drop shipped to your house. Now I'm dropping it all the way down. I'm knocking 500 off of my retail price. So you're gonna, and I'm covering tax. I'm gonna cover shipping. So let's just call it an even 999.99. Or a thousand bucks, so it's still cheaper than what I was selling you. Drop ship to your house, and I'm still going to drop a sh drop ship it to your house. So, like, you've got to be prepared mentally. So, why do I do the drawing? Because it gets names and numbers. That's your leads. Most most shows are made on the lead box. Guys, listen, don't believe the hype. I mean, yeah, oh, so and so did a show and made two hundred thousand dollars. That's so and so. That wasn't even a show. So, don't just get that out of your head. Most shows, you're going to sell whatever inventory you brought. If you bring three units, you're going to sell three units. If you sell, sometimes you're going to go to a show and make zero dollars at the show. You're going to lose two, three thousand bucks. You've got to literally, when I do a show, it's like investing. What are you willing to lose? What are you willing to lose? Hey, I'm going to invest in Bitcoin. Great. How much are you willing to lose? Well, I, 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 I can only afford to lose 500 bucks. Well, then don't put 5,000 in. All right, put 500 in. And if, it, and if it multiplies to five grand, then play with the house's money. Take your money out, play with the house money, right? So the same thing in a business like this. Don't do a show you can't afford to do. You have to have like, play the devil's advocate and say, my wife hates it when I do this because I'm always saying, well, you know, worst case scenario. Mark, we don't live like that. You don't have to be worst case scenario. That's fine, but I'm a realist. So I said, look, worst case scenario, is I lose. I don't make a dime at this show. And I have to be like, okay with that. But I'm going to get a lead out of that show. And that lead's going to turn into a new business partner. It's going to open up a bunch of doors for me. Maybe that business partner runs on high rise, or maybe that business, maybe that person who comes through my show is a sport, runs a sports complex, or maybe that person who came through my show. So don't blow the person off because they told you no. And don't ever take a business card, give them a business card. What you do is you say, here, fill out this, this drawing slip. And then a mark on there that you're just interested in winning the prize, or just in, tell me what you're interested in. I put on there technology, I put on there, uh, nu nutritional. I put, um, you know, just, I want to make extra money. I put these, these options for the person to check off. I say, just go ahead and fill out your information, check off if you want, if you're, what, what you're most interested in. So I can contact you after the show. Well, I don't want to give you my name and number. Just give me your card. Well, then forget it. I ain't giving you nothing. Move along. Okay. Because if you're not willing to give me your number, you're not going to answer the phone or you're not going to, you're not going to call me back. Okay. So that's, it's just a dead prospect. You've got to cut it loose and let it go because it's false hopes, false expectation. I don't give you my card. Now, now, if you fill out the slip, I may hand you the card. Hey, listen, you know, here's my business card. Thank you so much for filling out the slip. If you don't hear back from me in a week or so, because, you know, we're super busy. We've got these shows back to back. Um, just give me a call, all right? And, and I've had people who will either call me or they'll come back. I've had people come back. Not everybody's a liar. 
Okay. So, you know, we've had people and I, like, I've had people come into my booth and say, I'll be back, you know, I'll be back on Sunday. I want to buy something. Can you save me one of those things? And I, eh, whatever, you know, as soon as they leave, I tell my wife, I said, yeah, we're never going to see them again. And then they come running on Sunday, like, oh, did you save me a unit? I'm like, oh man, I just sold it. <laughs> I thought you were, you know, I didn't think I'd ever see you again, but uh, you know, so not everybody's going to lie to you. Um, and there will be people who come back, but I'm, I'm very skeptical or cynical or whatever. I mean, however you want to say it. Like if most people, if once you leave my booth, I'm never going to see you again. Like literally, like, I mean, you came through, you got excited. Um, and then you left without buying something or you won't fill out a drawing slip. Then, then it's most likely I'm not going to see you again. Okay. So you got to remember that guys, you've got to close the deal. I always used to tell a story when I was in college, we had to do a, uh, invent an item. And then it was this whole deal, right? So we had, to, we had to come up with a concept and this was, you know, what year was it? Like 1995 or whatever. We'd, we'd invent something and then we had to, to pitch it to a business guy. Well, I invented a personal communicator. It was just this little device, you know, that I could carry where I could get, send emails to people or you know, messaging and stuff like that. And it was all in the palm of their hand. And then uh, I should have patented it because now it's like the cell phone, but whatever. So anyways, um, went in, I pitched the guy, I sat it and they had a whole TV studio. You had the professor sitting there in a suit, pretending to be a businessman. I'm pretending to be a salesman, right? And at the end of the pitch, the guy's like, man, I really like this product. I think it could benefit my, my, my employees and it'll cut down on paper and blah, blah, blah. Well, why don't you call me back next week, Mark, and uh, we'll see if we can strike up a deal. And I got up and I shook the guy's hand. They looked me in the eye. I said, okay, you just failed. And I was like, what are you talking about? You said we were going to talk next week. He said, you didn't close the deal. You failed my class. All right. Well, hey, <laughs> that was a wake up call for me because I failed because I didn't close the deal. I mean, how many times do you, have, and this happens here in Tampa a lot, where you're sitting in a, in a meeting and you look at somebody that you showed this business to six months ago and they're signing up with somebody else. Guess what? Somebody else closed the deal and you did. It's hard. It's hard. I've seen, I've lost deals. I've lost some good deals to people and, it, and it's frustrating, but then they're right. They closed the deal. I didn't close the deal. I dropped the ball somewhere along the way, right? So boldness, boldness. What was the quote I just quoted you? Let me see if I still have it on my phone. I used to have this like posted on my computer or on my phone. Um, it says, whatever you, whatever you can do or dream, you can. Begin it. So you got to begin it and you have to have boldness because boldness is where the power comes, right? You've got, you've got to step out of your comfort zone. So Dan, if you're out there and you're doing a, a craft show and it's your first one you've ever done and you're timid, which I don't believe that, but let's say you're timid and you're like, oh, I can't, I, it's not, you know, I, I don't really feel comfortable talking to people. You've got to learn to step out of that and step into boldness because that's where the power comes, right? I remember when we were in, um, first started in Bible school, they sent us out soul winning. Watch that, Sam. And, um, I said to the, the, the reverend who was leading the class, I said, hey, can you pray for me to have boldness? And he says, Mark, it's like you need to step out of the boat onto the water. And that's where you're going to find the boldness. You, you can't get boldness inside of the boat. It's when you step out, the boldness will be there with you. It's like, it's like you're covering. It's like you're backing, right? So you have to be bold with how you get that person to, to commit to buying your product. Don't, don't think that you're pestering them. Don't think, they want to be sold. It's like a kid wants to be disciplined, yeah. right? So that's why they push your buttons as a parent, right? Your kids push your buttons, push your buttons, put your, especially little ones, right? It's because they, 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 there's a craving deep down inside to, for discipline. And they, they are pushing you to see how far they can go. The same thing is happening with a prospect in your booth they want you to push that little bit. How many of you have been to a car dealership to buy a car and you're really not interested in that car and they work you over and then you're finally you break. All right, just go get the paperwork. Let's do this thing. And then you end up loving the car because you were sold on it anyway. You were sold, but there was hesitation in you. 
and the and the confidence of the salesman, right? The confidence of the salesman was what pushed you over the edge. So Sharon says you need more 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 boldness. So here's the deal: is that it's almost like putting the caution out, putting caution to the wind. Like when I was young, uh, younger, I was extremely, uh, you know, like in, introverted or shy or whatever. And then one day I just had to like, let it go. Like literally like I had to go, then I became like the class clown and was always like, you know, the most vocal person or whatever. But still, even then you can ask my wife, I don't talk to a lot of people, Yeah. right? Is that true? Yeah, this is um, the two things I was thinking about, like the, the business um, card yeah. is, um, are you going to talk? Hi. Hello. With the business card, it's, it's like, um, hey, get your phone out. I'll give you my number. You can call me if they really want to do it. The other thing that I we haven't tried um, is it says called Linktree. It's L-I-N-K-T dot E-E. And this has like, I know that Vaughn T. Anderson did it. And um, this has on there like about your business. So they can look it up and no, no, it's L I N K T R dot E. Okay. And so I'll put it on, um, on the signal page and you can check it out. It's like a, 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 you can do virtual business cards. Um, and if they really want it and they are interested, they'll do that. So sometimes, um, you know, they are interested in, and sometimes it's, it's you striking a conversation with them. Um, and, get, you know, just talking about something different, like, like Mark said, you know, um, you know, have you been coming to the fair long? What did you find interesting here? And um, the, those kind of things. So you can, I'll post this and that's all. Okay. <laughs> that's it. That's it for you. Well, thank you, Christina. That's good. Um, so anyways, just, you know, uh, Sharon, so you, for boldness is it, it really comes as like a, it's like muscle memory, you know, I mean, I like even speaking in front of large crowds, the first time I did it, uh, I couldn't talk, you know, my throat got seized up. I mean, I was just like stuttering over my words, I fear kicks in, um, you know, all this stuff. And then what, after the more you do it, the more confident you become in it. And then what, what happens is, is like, I remember years ago, I was working for a company and I was in uh, Houston, Texas, and I got a phone call and they, from the corporate office, and they said, "Hey, we're having our big national convention, and we want you to speak at it. We want you to do training at it." And I and I and immediately I felt the fear, like, "Oh man," because this is like this isn't a small group. I mean, you're talking about like a stadium. You know what I mean? You're talking about like an arena full of people, and um, and so, uh, but you know, it's like the Bible says, be ready, instant, in season, out of season. So I have to be ready. I have to be prepared, you know? And so, and what I realized was, and it was funny because if I said, yeah, sure, no problem. And I hung up the phone. I looked at one of my business associates. I said, oh man, I said, I am so nervous about this. Um, you know, having to speak at the uh, you know, big convention. And he says, Mark, he goes, the reason why they asked you to do it is because you're the best person for the job. He goes, if you weren't, he goes, they would have never asked you to do it. And that's, that was that was a game changer for me. At that point, I figured, hey, I don't think I'm good enough, but they think that I'm the best person for that job. And that's why they asked me to come and do it. So then the boldness just came on me. It just came on me. And it was amazing. I mean, it was just amazing to stand in front of all those people and to be able, and then at the end, to get the, the, that reaction back from the crowd and have people coming up to you saying, man, it was what you said changed yeah, you know, the trajectory of my business. And I still remember your speech from X. My mom gave a speech when I was a kid at a company convention she was in and, and people still talk about it. So, I mean, you're talking like, you know, 40 years later, people still come up to her and say, I remember that time you talked about, you know, the chickens and the eagles and all that, whatever her deal was, right? And um, so, yeah, boldness will come, but it comes with like with muscle memory. It comes with just consistently getting out in front of people and doing it. And then it also comes in belief in the product that you're selling, you know? So why can you be effective as a minister is because I believe in what I preach, right? And my, my ministry is kingdom business. I've lived it, right? So I I've seen it. I've, I've seen the principles. I've watched it happen. I know that, it, that it's real. I know that it works. I have conviction on it. So the same thing with your product. Why do I? Why is it that when somebody joins my business, I, I highly recommend they join my business with a professional whole house package, two air service pros, water laundry, seventy five dollars off of, of nutritional products and a free H two fuel bottle. Why do I do that? Because now they're a product of the product. Okay, and when you can take a whatever you get 
you know, so like our son had a nosebleed, it got blood all over a pillowcase. My wife didn't pre-treat it, took it out, threw it in the laundry and it came out like brand new with no soap and no hot water. That's conviction, right? Whenever you spill coffee on your favorite shirt and you throw it in and you think it's lost and it's gone or I spray painted my shorts on accident and it goes in the laundry and comes out like brand new. Whenever I can go get a, a, a glass of water and it's crystal clear and it tastes great and and it doesn't taste like a swimming pool and it came out of my bathroom sink here in Florida, which should taste like, you know, no good. Glacial mountain spring water right out of my tap. It's a game changer. So that's why when you have a, a, a relationship with a product and you're a product of the product, then you don't have to sell the product anymore. You're just sharing your personal testimony. Man, I used to get two size infections every year, like clockwork, boom, boom, boom. When I moved to Florida, left Pennsylvania, moved. To, I never, ever had an allergy in my life, ever. You, know, you go to the doctor, what are you allergic to? Nothing, zero. I mean, I don't know, maybe I was allergic to bees or something, or poison ivy, I think that was the only thing I was aller allergic to. I came to Florida, man, and it snows pollen. Like it, it's thick, it's green, it, it coats everything. And I would get super sick, like twice a year, until we got active here. 2020, 20, 20, everything changed for me put the units in my house. I've never had an issue. Never. I can tell you this, we've been no social distancing and zero masking. Like I have, I've worn a mask probably three, four times in my life. Okay. Um, and it's because I had to go see my grandma at a nursing home or whatever. Been thrown out of stores had knives pulled on me, all kind of craziness. Cause I don't mask. I don't social distance. I don't really care. Right. And, um, haven't been sick. I've never had COVID. And if I did, I wouldn't know anyway, cause I never took a test. So um, I've been in, I've lived in people's houses for, for 10 days that two people had COVID, never got sick. Why? Because I acted pure. So that's a testimony that I have. I don't need any special superpower for boldness. I just have to have conviction. When I have conviction in what I'm selling and I'm sharing it with people, then guess what? It becomes a natural sale for me because I believe in it. That's why I don't do every business that comes down the pike, guys. That's why I don't do them. There's a lot of opportunities out there. I mean, I get called every day for opportunity. That's why I don't do them all. Because I'm not, I'm not a product of the product. I'm not using it. I'm perfectly healthy. Or my car gets great gas mileage. I'm not going to buy a pill to give me an extra. I'm not going to spend $25 for a pill to stick in my gas tank that, gives, that saves me $4 a month. I'm not going to do it. I'm not a product of the product. I don't believe in the product. And I'll never be able to sell the product. Okay. So that's where your conviction comes. That's why in the beginning, all I sold was air because that's all that I had. Then when I got the whole house package, I sold the whole house. So anyways, that's, that's what's going to be your game changer. That's what, that's what brings you your boldness. And once you get that, once you realize that, man, this is all that I need, um, is just to be a product of the product and be loving the product. And then when you sign people, People come in the business the way that you came in the business. So if you come in on a five pack, you're going you're gonna to push five packs. That's why I never did that. You come in on three pack, you're going to push a three pack. If you come in whole house protection, you're going to push whole house protection. If you come in on easy pay, then you think everybody got to come in on easy pay. I had one guy came in on easy pay and everybody he joined was, he's like, Mark, I can't get the points in until next month because everyone, and I said, bro, why are you putting them on easy pay? Did you ask if they have a credit card? Did you ask if they've got the money or did you just assume that they were like you and had to go on easy pay? Well, I never asked. Well, call back and ask. Can you put it on a credit card? Can you get, can you save a hundred bucks? Can you get, earn some miles? So they did and the person joined without, just joined up, signed, bought the product. No problem. Yeah, we didn't know. I didn't even, you mentioned easy pay. So I thought I had to do it that way. So whatever you start with, whatever's your conviction level is how you're going to be in the business. When I joined my business, I had very specific goals. I want a thousand people in my business in my first year. You know, I wanted to be a gold executive. I wanted a car bonus. Like, so these were things that I put into my, my, you know, into my goals and I knew that I was going to hit it. You know, I knew because we hit a thousand people in our business in like the first four months or something. And then we hit the car bonus in the first four, four months. And we, so what I, my goal was for a year, but my convictions brought it sooner, right? Because I was so convicted on it that I know that I can do it, that this is my goal. So what is your goal? Remember, I gave you the project, take the vision, make it plain, write it. 
have your vision board, have your reason why you're in the business, start inviting people to take a look at what you've got. Be the only person present. You know, we did a meeting in Tampa and there wasn't a lot of people at it and two people joined my business that night. <clears throat> Guess why? Because I was there. A lot of people weren't there. They just weren't there. So if, if you're there and if you're present, people are gonna come with you and they're gonna join your business. So, and I, I, my wife goes, every time we go to those Tampa meetings, somebody joins your business. I said, I know. I said, the problem is I can't be at all of them because we travel so much. But I tell you what, almost everyone I've ever gone to, somebody joins. It's why it's because I'm present. And I, and I told somebody the other day, I don't care if I'm the last person at that meeting. If it's just me by myself, I'll still be there because there's going to be an opportunity. The school deals are coming. Who's going to be there to get them? The hospital deals are coming. Who's going to be the team that collects them? It's going to be my team. You know why? Because my team hasn't quit. Because my team's still plugged in. Because my, my team's still running. Because my team's still active. And if your team's dead and it's not doing nothing, it's time to recruit a new team. It's time to go out and look for new deals. It's, it's time when everyone else is, is distracted on everything else out there that you get laser focused and say, that's it. This is it. I'm going to press in and I'm going to, while everyone else is distracted, this is your opportunity to take the lead. It's your opportunity to be the next award trip winner to go to Vail or like, we're going to Vail next week. This time next week, I won't even have a, a meeting because I'm going to be in Vail. Maybe I'll do it. I don't know. Probably not. But, um, you know, two weeks after that, we get to go minister in Guatemala. That's the life that, that this business has afforded us to have. And I don't want to lose it, right? I don't want to lose it. So I'm going to continue to dig in and I'm going to continue to grow and I'm going to hit my goal. So listen, guys, it's, it's 12. I don't like to keep people past noon. I appreciate you all coming out. If you have any more questions, Dan, shoot me a call. Um, so God, we just pray right now in the name of Jesus that everybody's business is blessed. Guys, we still have got some goals to hit by the end of this month. If you haven't got your auto ship in, get it now. If you, do, if you missed the deadline, which you probably have, buy some product. Um, you know, we need more points to come in this month. So Let's just go get it. I mean, if you've got sales that are pending, let's call the people. Do not put off for tomorrow what could be done for today. If you've got somebody who's ready to buy a pack and, you're, and, you, and you say, well, I'm going to wait until the first of the month, you're, you're shooting yourself in the foot. You want to get paid on the 15th of September, not October. Okay, guys? So let's get these deals closed and let's uh, finish this month extremely strong. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I guess I was praying. Bless everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Bye. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Have God bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. No, oh, very interesting. You put on the thing. Right. Hey, Brian. Thank you. Hey, how are you doing? Good. Hey, if you give me an address to your uh, event, let me know if I can invite some people. Do you have room, Brian? Uh, I need to see how many, uh, was just a thousand people on his email list. So, so uh, I mean, I'll, I'll, get it, I'll get that to you by the end of the week, okay? All right, sounds good. So, all right. All right. Uh, Talk to you later.